Hello there and welcome back to the studio today. So today's episode is going to be another paint along style episode. It seems that you really enjoy the paint along style though. Uh, I will say this now. I'm going to have to say this each time I do a paint along. Whatever is created on this canvas today is not going to be very realistic. Okay. Repeat after me. Whatever is created on this is not going to be very realistic. This is going to be a demonstration paint along style so that you can paint or draw along with me. So that being said, I invite you to get your crayons, your pencils, charcoal, oil paints, acrylic paints, whichever kind of media you would like to use. And why don't you draw and paint along with me? The photo reference in the top left corner is going to be posted in my Facebook photo reference group. So while I'm at it, I should explain what I've done to this canvas already. So a little bit of odorless mineral spirits and the burnt umber and this big old brush is what I use to tone the surface. This is about, uh, it's been sitting on here for about 20 minutes. So I just wanted the um, odorless mineral spirits to um, do its thing and then the uh, paint just kind of settle in to create a nice and even distribution of color. Now for the colors, we have titanium white, burnt umber, alizarin permanent, cadmium red, yellow ochre, sap green, ultramarine blue, ivory black, and uh, below down here though you can't see is my medium. I'm using, um, actually let me just show you here. It says Rublev Venetian medium. It's uh, currently my favorite medium to use, so you know you could use pretty much any uh, medium you'd like in this style. So this is going to be the um, you know the the quick and easy alla prima type of approach to create a painting, or at least to start a painting. So I'm going to start off with a larger brush than usual for my umber drawing. And if you're new to this channel, the umber drawing is just a sketch in burnt umber. You could use raw umber if you prefer whichever of the umbers. Shoot, you could even you could even use a uh, dioxazine purple to draw if you want. Doesn't really matter. As long as you're aware that the color that you use for your initial drawing is going to have uh, a type of effect on the overall colors that you place. So that's why when I use burnt umber like this, I'm aware that the burnt umber will show through a little bit in the uh, end result, but I don't mind it. Burnt umber isn't really as intrusive of a color as say dioxazine purple. Now since this is a paint along style, the pace is going to be real time. You're going to see as much footage as I can possibly fit onto the SD card and um, I'll show you as much, if not every single brush stroke in this painting. And um, I won't be talking as much. So again, if you're new uh, to this channel or to this type of demonstration, again, it's not going to be that realistic, but it's going to be uh, something that you can draw or paint along with or just, uh, you know, keep this video playing in the side while you're working in the studio, you know, whether you have a commission or um, just your own work in your studio, you can just keep this on. So right now I have decided the dimension of the head, how, how much of the space I want the head to take. So now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start to uh, subdivide these shapes. And the reason I'm using a larger brush today is just to change things up. Now I want to be very simplistic with these shapes. So if you're drawing or painting along with me, feel free to pause the video to catch up or speed the video up if you're moving faster than me. So 
So that's going to be the, uh, the bottom of the nose there, give or take. Now I'm going to go ahead and use a horizontal, relate it to the ear. Ear goes right about there. Now remember, I'm drawing, or sorry, I'm painting and talking at the same time. So, excuse my English if I say something silly. Or just excuse me in general if I say something silly. It's kind of hard to multitask. But in general, I kind of prefer this approach to making a painting video a little more than the, um, the voiceover technique. So um, obviously with the voiceover technique, uh, it allows me much more time to create a more, uh, you know, realistic painting, but it's kind of draining, I think, over time. Whereas with this, I can talk and integrate the narration to the footage in real time. It's a little more interactive, I'd say. So the ear, I'm using a horizontal to help me right now. I'm just using comparative measurement. The ear is a little higher up on a horizontal relative to the uh, eyebrow. And I'm glad that um, those of you that uh, watched the previous video of this style, the last one I uploaded was um, the live stream that I did for my uh, Patreon, but the one before that, I was really, really struggling uh, with the drawing, pretty much with everything in the painting. But uh, most of you actually found that to be very beneficial. So I'm glad that, you know, my videos are helping you. Usually I'm kind of terrified to look at the, the comments. Um, you know, once in a while I'll get the courage to look at the comments. You know, and whatever you do, well, I guess I should probably talk more about the painting, right? But in any case, and everything that you do, don't fear the critics as much. I should take my own advice, right? Don't fear the critics, don't fear the cynics. There's some people out there that just, they're kind of like emotionally parasitic. Like they feel like it, they feel better trying to bring other people down and that's just sick. You know, they could be spending that time actually learning how to draw or learning how to paint. And then they just spend their time on the internet picking on people. Pretty shameful. But in any case, right now I had to actually move the nose a little bit. And this larger brush actually helps me, uh, I guess, not make so many details too early on. And I'm using a clean and dry brush right now to help me erase. So if you haven't tried this method yet, uh, where you tone the um, the surface like 20 minutes or so before painting, I highly recommend it. And see, the reason I waited 20 minutes, about 20 minutes, to start actually drawing is that in the first couple minutes, um, the surface is too slick uh, when you apply the mineral spirits and the... Um, the burnt umber, it's too slick for in the first couple minutes. So what you wanna do is you wanna wait a little bit for the surface to absorb um, some of the, you know, the paint that you put on there. Kinda reminds me of, uh, you know, if you've seen Bob Ross, the, uh, what, what was it, what did he call it, liquid clear? that he would put on the surface. Maybe it's something similar to that. I don't know. I've never actually worked with liquid clear or anything like that. So 
So I'm thinking the nose still has to move down a little bit. See how easily I can move a line with this technique. It's very much like charcoal. Very much like charcoal. Okay, I don't think that I want to put that much information for the umber sketch. Maybe I'll just put a little tone here of the burnt umber. And of course, as it settles, it'll just kind of seep into the canvas. I'm just making a dark mark here, just so I have an idea of where the top of the head goes. All right, so now with that brush that I was using um, to erase a little bit, I'm actually going to use it now to mix up a flesh tone. But there's one thing I wanna do actually before that. So I'm gonna try something different um, as I usually do. I like to try things different, uh, differently. Uh, I have a little thing of uh, microfiber cloth here. So with the microfiber cloth, I don't know if the paint has settled in enough for me to do this, but okay, never mind. So it is working. So with the microfiber cloth, I'm treating this like a chamois, like a chamois cloth. Um, or for those of you that work with charcoal, sorry, my hand is kind of blocking the footage, but I'll do what I can do. So with the microfiber cloth, again, this is something you can pick up at uh, any store. It doesn't have to be at an art store. I don't even think this came from an art store. This probably came from a local Target or Walmart or something. I'm using it to subtract a little bit and to draw. So two things at once here. So I'm drawing with it a little bit and I'm also laying down the, the foundation for the values that will eventually emerge. Kind of hard to reach over a camera so if you're wondering how i'm getting this shot the camera is literally like right in front of my chin so i'm trying to reach over there we go might have went too far down with the ear and let's put a little mark here for the tragus of the ear. Oops.
So I think that's a pretty neat trick, the microfiber cloth. Give it a try, let me know what you think. All right, now we can return to the color mixtures. And you know what? Let's keep things like really fun and really different this time. So I started mixing the yellow ochre and the um, titanium white with the brush. But how about we mix up a base flesh tone for the face? So a base flesh tone for the face. Try saying that 10 times. Kind of difficult. So titanium white, I forgot what I just put in there. The cadmium red, yellow ochre. And what I'm doing is, I'm, though you can't see me, I'm blurring my eyes at the image and I'm trying to get kind of like the average color that the face is relative to the background. So it seems rather orangey. Um, I remember taking this photo reference. I think this photo reference is about like two years old now. Um, I remember back then I had a halogen light. So the light was rather orangey. Whoops. There's uh, some bristles. Either that or it's cat hair in the paint. But a little cat hair wouldn't hurt your painting now, would it? So the Cadmium red. Uh, let's throw in the lizard permanent. A little bit of sap green. And we must raise the value a little bit. And then make it a little warmer. So I need to be mixing up a lot of paint, probably more than this. So I'm going to go right back into the cadmium red. Now, if you have flake white, this flake white would be very helpful. Um, but still, the lazy Upari still hasn't gone to the store to get more flake white. So just using titanium white. So it's a little too close to the yellow ochre right now. So I need to throw it a little warmer. And what I'm going to do with this color um, is I'm going to use it to draw all of the light shapes in the face. And then once I have that uh, foundation for all of the lights for the face, then I'll just go in and wet on wet literally uh, modulate the colors and the values. Having this foundation color now that's a lot of paint. Let's see here what I can do with the camera work other than kick the camera. Let's see if you can see how much paint is on here. A lot of paint. All right, I'll reset the autofocus. Okay, so I will let that be my base flesh tone as I drop all of my brushes. All right, so now let's go back to the original brush. That was mixing the flesh tone before. And let's start to draw. And there's no medium, no extra medium yet to the paint. But when I do use medium, I'll let you know. So the paint is very thick at the moment. And the idea is uh, thinner paint will stick onto thicker paint. And it's actually easier to manipulate edges uh, when you can control the thickness of the paint. So starting off a little bit more thick actually should prove beneficial later on. So 
So the nerve, the nerve, the nose actually kind of curves a little bit. So while I'm doing this, it would probably be a good idea to get the background out of the way and draw a little bit with the background. See what I really like about palette knife is that it's so easy to clean the palette knife. So now with a clean palette knife, uh, let's mix up the background color. So burnt umber and the alizarin permanent in about equal parts. Sorry for the shakiness of things, but what can you do? This easel is actually broken. Um, I have it kind of rigged with some clips. So sorry for the shakiness. So maybe just that, I don't know. Let's just throw in a little bit of Ultra marine blue just for just for giggles. Alright, so now I have my background color and I'm not gonna go crazy um, filling up the background color everywhere just yet. I'm actually gonna use it um, to draw. So see, literally using it to draw just like a, just like an outline. Very close attention is going to be paid to the side of the nose and the angle that the nose makes. Will it be perfect? No. But will it describe what it needs to describe? Probably. So the bottom of the nose here is a little more flat. Why not just use the background color for this accent? Why not? Now let's look at this angle. So as I'm placing down the, um, the light color here, I'm actually going to apply less pressure in the areas that I want to be a little darker, like that. Um, a little less pressure just so I can leave an indication for later uh, for where I'm going to modulate the values or where I'm going to um, make value changes. The mouth, I don't really care about the details for the mouth just yet, just an idea of where the mouth is going to fit is fine for now.
and I don't really think they'll bother with too much below the neck. Just a little indication that the, that there is a neck here and that's about it. Okay, now that we have that covered, I think it's now time to get the business of putting in some structure for the face and more clarity. Though, you know, I think we're gonna approach it from the darks. So I'm gonna go back to this color, add a little bit of ultramarine blue. Now I'm gonna use a little medium. So I use the medium uh, when I want to thin out the paint a little bit so that I don't end up using too much mineral spirits. So I have this dark foundation for the hair, though it should be a little bit more red, so let's just mix directly on the painting. I'm aware of the glare, so I'm trying to apply the brush strokes in this direction so it doesn't glare as much. And all of the planes for the hair, we'll, we'll get to that later. Or we won't, we'll see. Okay, all right, so now that we have this all mapped out, I'm gonna cover a little bit for the background. So ivory black, lizard and permanent. A little bit of sap green. So in a way, this is kind of like an underpainting, but a wet on wet type underpainting because this is all gonna be completed, hopefully, in one sitting. So just mixing directly onto the canvas. A little more medium. Go ahead and get to the color value web. So what I'm gonna do is get this color, move it off to the side. I'll reference it 
whenever I need it. And now I'll mix up the color value web. So let's start off with that color. So I moved it off to the side so I wouldn't accidentally just mix right into it. I remember it has to be a little bit more orange now. <clears throat> Excuse me, so yellow ochre, cadmium red, about equal parts, then the titanium white. Now we're gonna move on down. So if you're new to this channel, this is now the color value web that we're mixing up. And what I do is I blur my eyes as the image and try to record um, the tonal gradations that I'm seeing on that image and then create value transitions as I move on down. And when I mix the actual colors that I'm going to put there, I'm going to be working with an organized set of values. So a little bit more lizard and permanent, ivory black, and let's throw in some sap. All right, that should be good enough to get us started. Now I'm going to put that brush off to the side, pick up another, another brush. This is again a Robert Simmons brush. Currently my favorite bristle brush, type of bristle brush that is. All right, so see how I just put in the sap green, but we're still in this kind of color value family, so now we're going to start putting in the planes. Big brushes. I'm going to move up in value. Now remember, portraiture um, in particular goes through an awkward stage. So that usually will happen pretty much instantly in Alla Prima, right when you're going in for uh, values. So it's okay to go through the awkward stage in the painting. I have over 10 years experience painting and yeah, awkward stage just happens, that's all. It's just part of the process. So I'm mixing wet onto wet, uh, so thinner paint tends to stick onto thicker paint, but thicker paint onto thicker paint, as I've noticed, helps you kind of blend a little bit. And I use that word with caution. So by blend, I do not mean just trying to kind of artificially create a bunch of value transitions. I mean, literally that making an edge soft. That's all I mean by that. Now this is an area you'll really want to watch out for. So I'm going to make this very clear right now and I'll come back into it and make it more exacting later on. Just so you know, I'm aware this will look strange for a little bit.
So for those of you that are doing this painting at home, I'd recommend putting some cadmium orange on the palette, or at least having a cadmium yellow, which I don't, so I'm kind of having to wing it with the orangey type hue. I might actually go and get some cadmium orange in a minute. Yeah, the warmth is, is just not going to happen without the cadmium orange, so there you go. So in case you're wondering the brand, there you go. Come on, focus, focus. There you go. And I'm glad I put it on the bottom. <laughs> it's kind of uh, trying to run away from me. So, all right, cadmium orange to the rescue. Don't want to use too much of it. There, there's that orangey color that we need for that halogen light. And no, the audio didn't go silent. I'm just now reaching kind of that point where um, I won't be talking as much. So if you haven't already, go get yourself a sketchbook. You're probably just sitting there. Go get your sketchbook and draw along with me. You don't even have to be drawing this. You can draw your cat, draw your dog, draw your bearded dragon and draw your ball python. Just draw. Even if you've never done so before. Just get yourself some printer paper and just draw. That's what I did when I was younger. Although I would get in trouble in the classroom drawing the teachers.
So I think this is the point where I ran into trouble the last time. Uh, the last time I was filming in this style, so I think my mistake before was to try and go in a small area and then try to uh, render it too soon. So rather right now what I'm doing is I'm conscientiously uh, trying to work about the entire image all of these planes. Before uh, getting too caught up with any one area, especially in Alla Prima. Now when you're working in classical, which is what I usually prefer, though it's much much longer of a process, um, you can actually work in one area, like the eye and something or something and just move around. Um, but I find that with this technique, at least for me, uh, the most mistakes happen when I just zero in on an area too soon. But of course every case is different. So you have to be kind of adaptable to situations in painting. And being patient is a very big thing in this. You know, it's kind of awkward. I never really mentioned it, but it's kind of awkward to paint. Um, at least for me, it's awkward to paint and have a camera on me, like right in front of my face. Because usually when I'm filming, I'm trying to explain with my brush strokes along with my words uh, with what I'm doing but sometimes that can distract me to the point where I'll lose track of what's going on in the painting a little something to think about I'm hoping to get to the point where I can just continue to paint and not even notice the camera's on. All right, different brush. Get that background color again. I really have to squint my eyes to see these planes. You 
usually around the face, um, these areas here. I try as much as I can to use a color change and not so much a value change around here, though I just messed that up. Um, the reason being is uh, this is a very sensitive area on the face. So if you push the values too far, um, meaning if I made this too dark, it would look kind of like she was punched on the side of the face. So I gotta be very cautious with that. One of my orange, wow, look at that. <laughs> Where'd the orange go? <laughs> the orange is just slowly making its way. A little more orange. I think I can push the kind of pinkish color here a little bit. Let's use the alizarin permanent. Just mix it directly. Just let it mix. I'm going to go right back into the hair. All right, now it's time for the mouth. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna switch to a synthetic. I think the first thing I'm gonna do is just add a little bit of medium. So a little bit of the Venetian medium. Uh, 
for those of you that have never heard of Venetian medium from L Rublev, it does have a little bit of uh, turpentine and lead in it, um, which is actually a positive for for me, just because it's kind of more of a has more volume, I think, to it when you mix it into the paint. It's just something to be aware of. So when you use it, you definitely want to make sure you have some windows or some ventilation. Unless you're like me and you don't really mind. That might be too orange. So the red, alizarin. I think I'll just go with it. Gotta be careful with this distance right here. Uh, when you put it in the mouth, this can easily grow. So we have to be very cautious about that distance. Now let's go back into the background color. Now, luckily for me, um, I think the one of the attributes to the likeness of this model is this characteristic here. And my tendency is to make this long, which in our model, um, this is a little bit longer. So I think that that kind of helps me just because my tendency is to make this longer. I am very interested in um, offering online classes. So I do teach um, in-person classes. Currently I'm looking for more teaching jobs actually, but I'm teaching two classes, a portrait drawing and a portrait painting. I'm so fortunate I was able to get enough students to run them both this time. Um, but I was thinking of uh, how I would teach the courses online. I'm thinking in terms of live streams. Um, so it could be just like uh, an in-class or like teaching in class where I do a demonstration, I give a syllabus, and then I let the students work. So I'm thinking of doing uh, classes like that. But I need to find uh, a suitable platform to do so. So if you have any platforms in mind, you want to help me out? The mouth could move that way a little bit. I get a different brush, a little bit of medium, tiniest bit of odorless mineral spirits. So now we're getting into the smaller shapes. 
Still very cautious. So now is where I'm actually using a little bit of odorless mineral spirit. So this little cup here, this crusty thing, uh, just below the camera. So how about maybe a couple brush strokes per feature, but at the same time. So meaning brush strokes you saw here, you can count them, one, two, three, four, brush strokes over here, one, two, basically. And now we're gonna put in a few more brush strokes for the nose. Now I find that the way the brush stroke is applied is not as important as what the brush stroke is trying to uh, convey. So I'm not too concerned about the calligraphy of the brush stroke or anything like that. I'm just kind of more concerned about the information being described by each brush stroke. Let's use this color again. Now that uh, ground that we laid in initially, remember uh, with the palette knife, we mixed up that color. That ground is helping uh, tremendously with the uh, adherence of the paint. Is that even how you say it? With the paint just uh, sticking on to the surface.
So rather than the highlight being a dot, I'm trying to make it uh, a more descriptive shape. See how it's almost, it's almost like a stretched out pancake following around the nose. Hold on as I have to change a battery. All right, so the battery has been changed and uh, let's continue with this. So I'm thinking uh, what I'm gonna do now is paint the earring and then I'm gonna go into a lot of the form modeling in the face, though I don't think I'm going to render that much. But when I do get to it, I'm probably gonna be very quiet again. So, you know, go get your sketchbook. Go get your paints. Just draw along with me. You know, the. I think it really helps to have someone with you um, when you're working. I personally work much better in groups, I find. Um, this Monday, I'm going to head over to Karen's place. Um, the, the artist that I featured a while ago, um, we filmed a segment together. So it's just really nice to have someone to paint with. And, you know, if you don't have anyone to paint with you, uh, if you're like me and you have to stay in a studio by yourself for hours and hours and question your sanity, um, I I'm, I'm hope that uh, my presence here helps you a little bit. I'm going to have to add a little more mineral spirits to get the highlight to stick. There's a lot of work that I need to do, um, in particular on these shapes. So now I think I'm going to enter into the silence I was talking about.
So I'm actually going to use a little bit of impasto here. So I'm trying to build up the paint.
Now with a very soft brush, I'm gonna add the slightest bit of a hue change there. So a little more pink, but still in this kind of family of color. Let's see if we can do this. A little bit of medium. And now I will add a, a value change, very slight here, this one little area, just to turn the form ever so slightly.
Now I'm purposefully trying to minimize this shape, but it does need a little bit more definition than it has. Very tricky.
So I'm actually going to push a warmer note right on the side of the nose here. I'm going to let the paint go into the background a little bit. Then I'll come back in with the background color and leave a sharper edge to bring more focus towards this area. I think I'm actually going to go ahead and cover the rest of the background. So switching to the bristle brush, let's go back in. I did put a little bit of mineral spirits on the brush. So we can cover these dark shapes really quickly. Throw in some ultramarine blue. Some sap green. A little more ultramarine blue. Hopefully that'll help to push the hue variation a little bit. So I'm being sneaky. I'm sneaking in a cooler color in the background to push the warmer color and the flesh tone. So ultramarine blue, alizarin, Titanium white. Same deal.
Now back to the flesh color brush. Now with the background brush, start to push in some darker notes, or we'll start to push darker notes in the hair. See how much, well, I guess you can't see. Now you can see how much darker we can go. So clearly I made the background color different and the clothing color a little different from the photo reference. Because this is a painting and we have complete freedom to do what we want. And I just wanted to push the warmth. Now I just want to see how dark I can go with these shapes. You're just going to have to excuse the glare. Now the red, yellow ochre. Well, we're going to start to put in some of the planes for the hair. I'm really running low on my um, photo references these days. Um, this one, I don't think I painted before on YouTube, that is. At least I hope not. Not for any particular reason. It just happened to be kind of misplaced in my files. I'm completely messing up her hair, so I have to stand back and simplify. So there's a dark plane here, here. So the hair, I have to follow the kind of wave, it goes this way, tapers in, then goes out again over here. And then out again over here. I might have to make the background a little cooler and darker. So more alizarin, or sorry, ultramarine blue. A 
Though I don't think you can see this. Thanks to the good old glare. So I'm reunifying all these values. I think that my lights were a little too bright. There we go. Now it's starting to work a little bit there. Just takes a little bit of patience. I'm going to have to make this edge a little bit more specific. The switch brushes here. A little bit of medium. Could be that the chin might need to move up a little bit. So I'm going to do that with a dry brush. Might have to be a little warmer too, so now it's not a dry brush anymore. Back to the orange. You know, painting is a process of discovery. Um, it may seem like I know exactly what I'm doing when I apply each brushstroke, but sometimes I don't really know. You know, sometimes it's um, you place something down next to something else, you stand back, you see if it works. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. And then the, um, you know, the end result, really depends on how much patience you have how much patience you have with that um, exploration it's not necessarily kind of like a systematic approach it may seem like it at times but there's a lot of discovery so painting as a process of discovery. You know, after going back into that, now I'm starting to realize, um, or I just now realize that I can still push that in a little bit. And again, Ala Prima is never really going to have the same 
degree of finish as a more classical approach. But it's, I, I want to say it's a lot more fun uh, to work this way. It's much faster too. But it does cost um, the, uh, it, it does cost a little bit with the result. You know, it's going to end up looking a little more expressive of a painting, but that's okay. You know, whenever I do Alla Prima, I usually get the most hate mail uh, or hate comments or something like that. Just because people don't really understand that this is about trying to show you a process rather than creating a perfect photographic looking image. Everyone just seems to want the photographic looking image. But I think this is just more of a fun kind of uh, interactive type of video than the, you know, the realistic voiceover. In the end of this, I don't know how long the painting footage is going to be. And I hope I can get all of the footage to upload on time. But um, in any case, I mean, it's, it's not going to be like, a, you know, like a 12 hour portrait that that I'll work on for a long time. Sometimes it can get kind of tiring to work on a 12 hour portrait. You know, sometimes we just want results. There's a time and place for classical and a time and place for Alla Prima. I think I can push a little more warmth for the concavity of the eye socket. And then of course the nose. So someone said that I basically just showed how to repaint or something like that, continue how to repaint. Not sure if that was a good thing or a bad thing, but um, that's kind of part of the uh, exploration process that I was talking about. You know, I keep coming back and forth, back and forth to each shape. You're seeing how little by little, brush stroke at a time, one brush stroke at a time, we have an image emerging.
See, exactly what I said. <laughs> Going right back in to another area. I'm trying to describe the form a little bit more alongside this plane change. Um, that is, I'm trying to pay attention to what shapes are what value. So the value is highly important right now. Not so much the color. You know, this could be any kind of color really, but the value is what's going to give the curvature of that particular form. Now color change is something you really wanted to use like here, whereas here it's really in the values.
So I noticed that the this area in particular needed to get a little warmer and the values needed to kind of turn a little bit more. Still very cautious with the edges. It'll be sharper here, but not as sharp as this. Soft here, but not as soft as this. And then really soft over here. Just wanted to make that edge a little softer. So I um, found a value or a color in between those edges. A little more space here. A 
Well, that doesn't bother me too much. Maybe a few last little curls or waves for the hair. Very little though. And I think that's going to be about it for this week's episode. So I hope that this helps you out. And yes, I did change the, um, the hue a little bit overall. Um, so I didn't want it to be quite as orangey as the, um, the photo reference, just because that halogen light, I think, just made the photo reference too orangey. So for those of you that are going to go to the, uh, f the Facebook photo reference group, and work from the uh, the same photo reference. Just be mindful that the picture is a little too orangey. Uh, so I would definitely play down the oranginess of the photo reference. That being said, thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to see more videos like this one, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you would like to support this channel, I have a Patreon account. I wish you the best in all of your artwork, and I'll see you on the next one. And it's now time for our new patron shout out. So I actually I had to uh, look up how to pronounce this one. So I apologize if I can if I mispronounce your name. 
um, Barra de Watch. That's how it said on um, the. Uh, there's a YouTube video on how to pronounce your name, Barra Duwatch. Um, so thank you so much for becoming a member on my Patreon account. And thank you, thank you so much to Kathy Maroney. I hope I can pronounce your names correctly. Thank you so much for becoming members on my Patreon account. It helps me out tremendously, tremendously. Your support means so much to me. I wish you the best in all of your artwork, and I'll see you on the next episode. And it's now time for our new patron shout-out. So thank you, thank you so much, Kathy Maroney. And thank you, thank you so much, Bahara Duwatch. I hope I can say your name properly. I wish you the best in all of your artwork. Thank you both so much for becoming patrons on my Patreon account. It truly, truly helps me out so much. I wish you the best in all of your artwork, and I'll see you on the next one. And it's now time for our new patron shoutouts. So thank you, thank you so much. Kathy Maroney. Thank you. Thank you so much. Baharadwash Mudigonda. I hope I can say your names properly. Thank you. Thank you so much for your support on my Patreon account. It really, really does help me out so much. I wish you the best in all of your artwork, and I'll see you on the next episode.